Did you know that one of the most vital arteries in New Zealand is a highway driven straight through the ancient heart of a dead volcano? The Littleton Tunnel is a 1,970-meter passage carved through solid, hard volcanic rock to connect the main city of Christchurch with its deep water port. When it was built, engineers used over 38,200 cubic meters of concrete just to line the walls, enough to fill more than 15 Olympic swimming pools, and they managed this monumental feat in a rapid three years, despite having to smash through the mountain inch by hard one inch. The tunnel is so crucial that a recent $28.7 million project was needed just to update the safety systems. This is a massive cost for a structure that has already survived devastating earthquakes. But how did they drill through that brutal volcano so fast, and what secret vulnerability did the earthquakes expose that made this huge ultimate mega-build safety upgrade absolutely essential? Before the tunnel, the Port Hills stood like a massive jagged wall, separating the booming farmlands of the Canterbury Plains from the ships waiting in Littleton Harbour. For early settlers, getting goods from the farms to the sea meant an agonizing trip. The first path was the steep, tough bridal path. Later, they built a winding road over Evans Pass, but it was still an exhausting eight-kilometer climb over the volcanic hills. While a railway tunnel opened way back in 1867, it was only a single track and quickly became a bottleneck. Every day, the outdated system caused expensive delays, costing the country huge amounts of money in slow cargo handling and ships waiting to be loaded. It's hard to believe, but for years, plans for a modern road tunnel were put off. One famous, slightly funny reason was that people worried horses traveling from the warm plains would catch cold on entering the tunnel. This shows just how big the thinking challenge was at the time, but the sheer economic need finally forced action. By the 1950s, the struggle was too costly to continue. In 1956, special laws were passed to create the Road Tunnel Authority. This body was finally given the power to borrow the huge funds needed to build the dedicated highway tunnel, setting the stage for one of New Zealand's biggest engineering challenges. So the stage was set, the money was ready, and the engineers had their target, a massive hard mountain. But how exactly do you take on a solid volcano with the technology of the early 1960s? When the project officially began in 1962, the engineers and contractors knew they had a fight ahead of them. They weren't digging through soft dirt. They were drilling straight through the dense, tough basalt rock, the remnants of the Littleton volcano. To guarantee success against this brutal geology, the project became a crucial international effort. The contract was awarded to a joint venture team. The local experts, Fletcher Construction Limited, teamed up with the giant American company, Henry J. Kaiser Company. In the early 1960s, the giant tunnel boring machines you see today were not suitable for this kind of fractured, hard volcanic rock. Instead, the team relied on the powerful, precise method known as drill and blast. It was a systematic, disciplined battle against the rock face. First, specialized drilling equipment would bore a precise pattern of holes into the solid rock. Think of it like a giant needle punching holes into a hard wall. Next, these holes were carefully filled with explosives. The team would retreat and the explosives would be detonated in a carefully controlled sequence. This blast wouldn't destroy the mountain, but it would fracture the immense rock mass, making it small enough to be removed by digging machines. The team had to repeat this cycle day and night. They drilled, they blasted, they cleared, and then they did it all again. It was a slow process, moving the tunnel face forward just a few meters at a time. But this constant, systematic work was highly efficient. By opening the Littleton Tunnel in February 1964, the international team had successfully punched the nearly two-kilometer passage through the heart of the volcano in approximately three years. It was a monumental achievement of pace and precision. Once the rock was excavated, the new passage had to be made safe and permanent. The tunnel needed a strong structure to hold up the enormous weight of the volcanic mountain pressing down from above. This meant pouring a huge amount of concrete to create the tunnel lining. The engineers ended up using an incredible volume of material. Approximately 38,200 cubic meters of concrete was needed for the lining. To help you picture this number, consider that a standard large concrete mixer truck holds about 8 cubic meters of concrete. 
the Littleton Tunnel required over 4,700 truckloads of concrete, all poured and set deep inside the mountain. This massive concrete fortress, running the full 1,970 meters of the tunnel, guarantees that the two traffic lanes are safe and secure for decades to come. The finished bore measures about 7.3 meters wide inside the lining. This provides just enough room for the two lanes of State Highway 74. Because the tunnel is so narrow and deep, the rules for vehicles are very strict. This ensures safety for everyone using the passage. The maximum height for any vehicle is strictly limited to 4.27 meters. If you have a large freight truck, this is the absolute limit of what can pass safely. The maximum width for a vehicle without special permission is even tighter, only 2.6 meters. To give you an idea, 2.6 meters is just a little wider than the average family car. These tight dimensions mean drivers must be very careful, and any oversized load needs special planning and escort before it can even attempt the journey. But a successful tunnel is not just about the hole and the concrete lining. Once the cars start flowing, the structure needs complex, powerful life support. How do engineers make sure you don't run out of breath deep inside the mountain? Deep beneath the rock, the Littleton Tunnel runs like a giant machine, relying on sophisticated operational systems to keep vehicles moving and air breathable for the roughly 11,000 users every day. The biggest problem in any road tunnel is exhaust fumes. As thousands of cars and huge freight trucks move through, they pump out gases like carbon monoxide. If left unchecked, the air quality would quickly become dangerous or even deadly. To solve this, the Littleton Tunnel uses a highly effective centralized ventilation system. This system uses massive fans located in control buildings at the entrance and exit. The scale of the fans is incredible. The tunnel uses four main fans, two for pulling fresh air in and two for pushing stale air out, and each fan measures a colossal 3.7 meters in diameter. That is taller than many small vans. These four massive machines constantly work to replace the air across the entire 1,970-meter length, keeping the air safe and clean for every vehicle that passes. Imagine driving fast on a sunny day and suddenly entering a pitch-black hole. Your eyes take a second or two to adjust, and that moment of delay could cause a major accident. Engineers solved this problem with a clever system called a brightness gradient. The lighting is much brighter right at the entrance or the portal. As you drive deeper into the tunnel, the light intensity gradually and smoothly decreases. This carefully engineered reduction allows your eyes the time they need to slowly adjust to the darker environment, preventing that blinding moment of transition and ensuring continuous visibility and safety throughout the entire journey. For nearly 50 years, the tunnel performed its duty. But in 2011, the huge Christchurch earthquakes tested the structure's limits. The main tunnel bore, deep inside the solid rock, proved incredibly resilient. The huge concrete lining held up perfectly, suffering no major structural damage. However, the area around the entrances was not so lucky. The control building was so badly damaged, it had to be demolished, and rockfalls destroyed the canopy entrance. More importantly, the quake closed the main alternative route over the hills, Sumner Road, due to major rockfalls. Instantly, the Littleton Tunnel became the only crucial road link for the entire port of Littleton and the South Island economy. This single route dependence highlighted an unacceptable risk, fire. The Littleton Tunnel is the only tunnel in Australasia that allows high-risk freight, including fuel tankers, to pass through, though only during strict nighttime closures. With an average of 600 fuel tankers using the route every month, a major fire event could shut the tunnel for months, causing national economic damage. This massive risk demanded the ultimate upgrade. That is why the government approved the huge $28.7 million project to install a state-of-the-art fire suppression system. The goal of the new deluge system, completed in 2019, was to fight fire instantly and stop the dangerous chimney effect where smoke and heat rush quickly down the tunnel. The project required a massive effort, including the installation of 10.5 kilometers of pipework throughout the tunnel, hidden above the traffic lanes. Attached to this complex network are over 2,274 specialized fire sprinkler nozzles. To target the fire perfectly, 
the 1,970-metre tunnel is split into 63 distinct fire zones, with each zone covering just 30 metres of road. If a fire is detected, the system activates only the specific 30-metre zones needed. The water output is immense and precise. It delivers 10 litres of water per minute per square metre across the affected area. That is a heavy focused torrent designed to suppress even a major fuel fire instantly, protecting the concrete structure until fire services can arrive. The entire system is fed by a huge, newly built water reservoir located above the tunnel entrance. This high-tech defense is the tunnel's ultimate insurance policy, ensuring that this economic lifeline remains open no matter the disaster. The decision to drill through the Port Hills was not taken lightly, especially because of the immense financial investment required. The original construction cost for the Littleton Tunnel, when it was completed in 1964, was approximately £2.7 million. This was a colossal sum for the country at the time. To help pay for this debt and the massive engineering project, a small toll of 20 cents was initially charged to motorists using the passage. While there was some concern and criticism about the cost and the toll at the time, the benefits quickly outweighed the negatives. By providing direct, fast access for freight to the deep water port, the tunnel dramatically lowered transport costs and streamlined logistics for industries across the entire South Island. Because of its indispensable value as a free, essential public infrastructure, State Highway 74, the toll was removed completely in 1979. Today, the tunnel continues to be a vital artery, handling over 11,000 vehicles every day. The fact that the government recently spent $28.7 million on safety upgrades for a 60-year-old structure proves that the value of this tunnel today is far greater than its original building cost. If you found the technical journey through the heart of this ancient volcano as impressive and detailed as we did, then you know what to do. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the Ultimate Mega Builds channel for more deep dives into the world's most impressive infrastructure. Leave a comment below telling us which Mega Build system you want us to cover next. And of course, turn on those notifications so you don't miss a single story. We'll see you on the next Mega Build.